And the goal to our right, the east goal here at Viking Stadium. And there is no uh, breeze that is uh, going to be affecting uh, anything here tonight when it comes to uh, this uh, football game. It is a bit cooler than it has been, but... Uh, Anyone who's grown up playing football has played in conditions like this, Chris. Yeah, and you know, honestly, for a, from a player's standpoint, this is absolutely perfect weather. It's uh, not not uh, a night where you have to worry about overheating and maybe getting those uh, cramps or other little injuries, but it's also not a night where uh, you have to worry about standing around and uh, you know getting really cold uh, on the sideline. And uh, you know, you you can see in front of us uh, a lot of the spectators in the stands are uh, you know bundling up. But like I said, from a player's standpoint, this is a perfect Perfect night. Decora will kick off from left to right. I uh, hope you enjoyed the Bruce Springsteen montage there. Uh, you're uh, somewhat of a fan of his, from what I hear. Um, uh, I consider myself a pretty big fan. That song is great live, by the way. Oh, really? Your uh, fun musical weekend uh, that you had last November. I tried to uh, treat you with Zach Brown in Madison on a Friday night. Oh, I'm going to Springsteen Sunday night. <laughs> Always have to one up me. I blame the councilman. So. <laughs> Anyway, Cole Sweska will kick off from left to right. Sweska on the season has put 10 of his 37 kicks in the end zone. He's averaging 53.2 a kick. Brennan Ryan averaging 19.2 a return. Is back deep for the Hawaiian Huskies. Week number eight of the high school football season about ready to begin. Here is the approach and the kick. It is deep as Ryan takes it. Far side hash mark at the five. Straight ahead, 10-15. He's to the 20. Finds an opening, 25. He is hit and knocked back from the 26-yard line. So a return of 21 yards for Ryan. First down and 10 for a wind from that point, moving right to left as we're just underway. The uh, the coverage unit for the Vikings, again, uh, proving to just be a staple uh, in the special teams. They've done uh, just an outstanding job all year of uh, really pinning the opponent in, uh, you know, not great field position, not horrible, but, uh, you know, it's something that's really stood out so far this season. Michael Ruiz is getting the start at defensive tackle for the injured Matt Whittle. Tanner Rising is that quarterback. He'll take the snap out of the pistol, rolling to his left side. He's in trouble, and he just falls down back at the 14-yard line. He had Michael Savaroff and Austin Ashbacker collapsing, and he waved the white flag. It's a loss of 11. It looked initially like he might have had a receiver uh, on the near side running kind of an out pattern, but uh, hesitated with the ball, and by that point, the, uh, the pressure was just bearing down on him. Second down and 21 from the 15-yard line. Receivers left and right, double wing set, pistol set. Rising takes the snap, rolling out to his left side. Hit by Austin Ashbacker, covered up inside the 10 and down to near the 7 yard line. Holt Johansson was also there. Huskies going backwards, a loss of 8. Two plays, negative 19 yards for the Huskies. Yeah, you know, we're only two plays in, obviously, but Decora doing uh, exactly what we talked about before the game. Uh, pretty fundamentally sound on these first two plays, not biting uh, on that play fake. Minute into the game, no score. Third and 29 for the Huskies from the seven. Four receivers set, pistol set. Rising takes the snap, stands in his own end zone, throws the right side incomplete. He went to Anthony Jones on the far side, numbers near the 20. Coverage provided by Dustin Carey. Three and out from the defense, and uh, the new streak continues tonight, <laughs> and, uh, or begins tonight, I should say. He uh, he did put that ball in a, in a spot where the defender was not going to be able to get it. The only problem is he put it in a spot where his own receiver was not going to be able to get it. So uh, great job by the Viking defense on the first possession. Jared Ladderberg, 30.5 a punt. Snap back in good shape. He'll move forward, get the kick away. This one coming down to Sweska at the 37 center of the field. Runs to his right to the 35. Bouncing right to the outside. A block from Savarov, 20. East to the 15. Up the sideline, 10. 5. Touchdown! Cole Sweska, 37-yard punt return, and a minute 28 in, Decora takes a 6 to nothing lead. And you talk about, uh, you know, a quick start like we've had, uh, uh, well, I guess every week, uh, excluding last week against Crestwood, but the Vikings so far this season have done a great job of coming out and uh, putting opponents uh, in a hole uh, quickly, and right away Cole Sweska energizes this uh, the sideline and this crowd, uh, tiptoeing down the sideline. I didn't think he was going to make it initially, but, uh, you know, found a way to get in the end zone. Andy sinking for the PAT, 21 for 23 in said category. Carter Zidlicki will snap it and 
Drake Skurring will hold. It wasn't a great snap, but a kick is up, and it is good. It is a 7 to nothing lead for Decora. And let's take a timeout for, that's the four special teams touchdown for Decora this year and the first for Cole Suesquez. The aforementioned Cole Suesco will kick off from left to right, and Brennan Ryan will be the deep back for the Huskies. 7 to nothing to Cora, minute 28 in. Suesco's kick is deep. It comes down to Ryan, and he'll make the catch at the goal line. Straight ahead, 5, 10, 15. He's hit near the 17-yard line and covered up right there. Alec Felschul was down on special teams, as was Jacob Leaps, first and 10 for the Huskies from that point. And, uh, you know, not much else you can say about this unit. Just coming down with reckless abandon, but, you know, at the same time maintaining uh, their uh, their spots on the field, staying in their lanes, and just making good fundamental open field tackles. So, first down and 10, 16-yard line, right to left go the Huskies, trailing 7 to nothing. Receivers left and right, pistol set, rising takes, gives to his back up the middle, running across the 20 is the O-line back, and he gets covered up near the 21-yard line. The running back for the Huskies that time was Mason Shannon, who pretty much leads them in most offensive and defensive categories. It was Kyle Kane who brought him down a gain of five yards. Yeah, obviously the most productive uh, offensive play thus far for O-line, but uh, you know it's something we touched on in the pregame. Uh, you allow a team to pick up five or more on first down, uh, you know, you're putting yourself at uh, a disadvantage. Second and Five from the 22. Give off the right side to Shannon. Covered up off the right side as he gets knocked down right near the 23-yard line. In from the defensive end position or defensive tackle position, Sean Truen. Holt Johansson helping out. It's third down upcoming. Yeah, the uh, interior of the Viking uh, defensive line there did a nice job responding. Uh, after that first down play, uh, you know, on second down, really clogging up the middle of the field and uh, not giving the ball carrier anywhere to go. Third down and about three from the 23 7 nothing to Cora, two and a half minutes in. Receivers left and right, pistol set. Give is to Shannon off the left side, runs across the 25 and gets brought down at the 27. He'll have the first down, Kyle Kane the stop. So, uh, you know, after forcing a pretty quick, pretty effective three and out uh, on the first possession, Oline, uh, you know, after giving up that score, comes out, responds, picks up a first down, and, uh, you know, this Viking defense uh, is going to want to, you know, not let that happen again. Obviously, it's uh, after that first possession, it kind of looked like Decora might have the upper hand, but uh, O-Wine doing some nice things here. Double tight ends, receivers left and right, illegal motion on O-Wine as they sent a guy in motion, and the receiver on the near side, Damon DeCross, started in motion as well. Scott Whitehill will say legal procedure against the Huskies. Last week was the first time this year that a Decorah opponent had more penalties and more penalty yardage than Decorah. First down and 10, 15, or first and 15, rather, at the 22. Three minutes in, 7 nothing Decorah. Receivers left and right. Two tight ends, pistol set with Rising and Shannon. Rising takes the snap, has time, throws the right side, and it's dropped. Jacob Leaves had nice coverage on the intended receiver, that was, I believe, uh, Brennan Ryan. A correction, it was Grant McMillan in the right flat near the 20 in second and 15. That's the second time uh, tonight on a, on a pass play that we've seen uh, Rising kind of hesitate and almost pump fake the ball. And uh, like you said that time, Darren, Jacob leaps all over the coverage. So second and 15 from the 22. Two receivers left, single receiver right. Two backs in the backfield, and Rising takes the snap. He'll give it to Shannon right side and get covered up near the 22-yard line. Shannon brought down for no gain on the play. Eric Severson on, on the defensive line, as well as Corey Anderson on the defensive line. A loss of one-third and a long way is for Owen. Yeah, and uh, now a pretty obvious passing uh, situation here for the Huskies. Uh, you know, this Decora defense, I'm sure, uh, has seen a lot of film. I'm sure they're going to be ready for just about anything on this third and long. Third and 15 from the 22 Huskies, 0 for 1 on third down. Taking the snap is the quarterback rising. Throws the right side, caught by DeGraw. He breaks the tackle of Sinkink. He goes up the far side across the 30, and actually he stepped out of bounds at the 26-yard line. So it's only a gain of four, so it's fourth down and 11 upcoming. Yeah, you know, he did uh, obviously step out of bounds earlier, but uh, DeGraw is showing a nice Nice little burst of speed there after he broke the initial tackle in the backfield. And, uh, you know, the Vikings fortunate that uh, he stepped out of bounds or O-line might have uh, kept the offense on the field. First punt by 
Latterberg was 30 yards. Cole Sweska brought it back, 37 for a score. Snap back in good shape, moves forward, gets the kick away, and they kick it out of bounds. Surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> As the headlines been up the or the back judge up the far side, Travis Pike will mark it out at the 45-yard line. So the punt will go 29 yards, no return, 720 or 752 rather to play first quarter. Decor on offense for the first time tonight. They lead it seven to nothing, thanks to a special teams touchdown from Cole Sweska, a 37-yard punt return. Football on the left or far side hash mark as the Vikes move on offense from left to right. To the right side will go Meyer. Wing back right is Sweska. Split back Savaroff and Johansson. Tight end left is Kyle Kane. And I think there was an early start as Sean Truen lost control of the snap from Pierce. And Pierce got back on it. And it ends up being a second down. It's a loss of two yards. I'm surprised Sean didn't get penalized for a snap infraction there. And, you know, not the, not the kind of miscue you want to see uh, on your first offensive play of the game. Obviously, coming into this game, Decora, one thing they wanted to focus on was being you know fundamentally sound and sharp and uh, that's definitely not the way you want to start the game. Second and 12 from the 43 heading to the left side wing back left is Sweska tight end right is Keen. Split back Savaroff and Hovden. Here's the pitch to Savaroff right side a block from Ellsburn running to the 45 to the 50 near side numbers to the 40 and brought down at the 35 yard line in Husky territory it is a gain of 22 and a first down tackled on the play by Zach Lamphere. And uh, Jonathan Ellsburn looks like he's adjusting uh, pretty well early to that new uh, spot. He was out in front of the play there, you know, paving the way for uh, Suvarov. And, uh, you know, after the miscue on first down, uh, you know, you come back with a nice uh, long gain on second and uh, give yourself a new set of downs. We should say Riley Rue is playing for Austin Ashbacker at that power guard position. First and 10, 35-yard line. Give to Suvarov left side. A block from Rue. Breaks the tackle to the 30. Bouncing left to the outside. Stiff arms the man inside the 20. Lowering the shoulder. Knocked out of bounds. Inside the 15 at the 13 yard line. Cole Stanford, the man that brought him down, they're going to mark him at the 12. It's a 23 yard gain and a first down for Decora. And you know, as soon as you mentioned uh, Riley Rue, uh, Decora runs a little power play to the far side with Rue pulling out in front of the play. He picks up a great block and allows Savarov to pick up uh, you know a lot more yards. 6.44 to play first quarter, 7 to nothing. Decora first and 10 from the O-line 13. Football left or far side hash mark. Meyer left, Sweska wing left tight end right is Kane, here is the give up the middle to Johansson, slanting right to the 10 to the 5, to the end zone for the touchdown Holt Johansson now has 5 touches in his career against O-Wine and 4 touchdowns 5 or 6.38 to play second quarter, 13 nothing to Cora. And uh, that's what you like to see from this offense, the, they had the fumble obviously on the first play of the drive but then uh, you know two long runs by uh, Michael Suvarov and then Holt Johansson finishing it off and uh, you know you like to see your offense after that miscue on first down really respond and uh, you know play sharp on those next three plays. So first PAT was good by Andy Sinkink. And Drake Schuring will hold Carter Zidlicky's snap, and the kick is up, and it is good. So, 14-0 to Cora, 6.38 to play first quarter. This for those great folks at Decora Tire Service. 14-0 to Cora, 6.38 to play quarter number one. we got to send a special hello out tonight to one of the uh, great Viking supporters out there, Arnie Dalen, still recovering from uh, falling uh, during a, uh, con- some construction uh, work. And uh, just uh, we'll tell you about a, a nice gesture by uh, the young men of the Decora football team. After the kickoff, here, Sweska kicks it deep to Ryan, and it's going to be a touchback as it's three yards deep. Uh, all of the football players signed a football, and it was delivered out to Arnie before the game tonight. Uh, a, great gesture by uh, the young men wearing red and blue, and B, it's a great uh, gift and uh, a very well, get well soon uh, gift uh, to a guy who uh, bleeds as much red and blue as anyone I know in Arnie Dalen. And Arnie, I know you're listening tonight. Get well soon, my friend. Yeah, and you know, Darren, as a player, you always want to do all you can to give back uh, to those people that support you. So uh, definitely a nice gesture. First and 10, 20-yard line. Rising takes, gives to Shannon. Knocked back from the 17-yard line. 
And they're going to mark him all the way actually at the 15. Austin Ashbacker was in on that play. Also uh, Nick Gosling at the defensive tackle. Also Michael Ruiz at the 15, the defensive tackle position. Loss of five, and Shannon really didn't have a prayer on that one. No, the the, uh, the defensive line of the Vikings just shot off the ball. Uh, really pushed the, the uh, O-line offensive line into the backfield, and uh, yeah, just nowhere to go uh, for the ball carrier. Second down upcoming. Pitch goes to Shannon right side being chased by Ashbacker hit by Ruiz and covered up near the 17 yard line. Austin turned the play back in. Ruiz and Henning finished him off at the 17. It's a gain of two so it's third down and 13 with 5.50 to play first quarter. It's a 13 to nothing lead for Decorah, or a 14 to nothing lead for Decorah, my bad. And, uh, you know, there's that pursuit we've talked about from Austin Ashbacker coming from the opposite side of the field, turning the play back in, allowing, uh, you know, his teammates to make the play. Third and 13 from the 17. Snap back to Rising. Has time. Hit by Ashbacker as he throws. Intercepted. Brighton Meyer at the 30. Runs to his left of the 20. Far sideline. 10. 5. Touchdown. Flag down, though, at the 15 yard line. It was after the interception, but Brighton Meyer with his second career pick. It looks like, uh, well, they are going to get uh, Colin Nimrod for a block in the back there on the return. It was, uh, you know, a pretty obvious one right yep. on the sideline in front of the official. That's something, you know, as an official, you see that you have no choice but to uh, throw the flag. But uh, Brighton Meyer. Doing an excellent job in coverage that time, stepping in under that route, just taking the ball away from the receiver, and then you know doing uh, exactly what you're taught to do on the return, which is uh, pick a side, get up the sideline, and let your uh, your your teammates form a wall for you. But uh, coming back, but uh, you know. Again, outstanding job by this Viking defense to uh, force the turnover. First and 10, 25-yard line left to right. Go the Vikings, 522 to play first quarter, 14 to nothing. Decora. Right Meyer to the right side. Wing back right is Sweska. Tight end left, Dustin Carey, Jay Coveton, and Holt Johansson. Split behind Bryce Pierce, who takes the snap, retreats in the pocket, rolling to his right side. Has all day to throw. He finds his man, Brighton Meyer, down to the 15-yard line, close enough to a first down for the officials to stop the clock. It was Cole Stanford, the man that brought him down, Credit the offensive line first for some very nice protection. Yeah, Bryce, uh, like like you said uh, during the play, Darren, just with all day to throw the ball, uh, you know, he, he kind of rolled out a little bit to, to make uh, some extra room to get the pass away, but uh, definitely this offensive line doesn't look like uh, it's lost uh, anything with, uh, you know, some new faces in there. So it's first and 10 at the 15 yard line. Carry tight end right, split to the left side. Henning wing left is Sweska, split backs with Hubden and Johansson. Give to hold. We're slanting left to the five to the end zone for the touchdown. Six career touches against O'Wine and five touchdowns for Holt Johansson. 20 to nothing to Cora. 453 to play quarter number one and for the most part we you ask for a business like approach early on in this game you are getting a business like approach and uh, they run uh, behind the power side there again it's uh, Jonathan Ellsburn and I think uh, Riley Rue yep. is still in there and you know once he got to uh, the next level Holt did a nice job of just picking a lane cutting in there and you know just kind of cruised into the end zone Holt Johansson with his second touchdown and that's his 10th rushing touchdown of the season. Sinking PAT up and good. 21 nothing to core up. 4.53 to play quarter number one. We'll take a break for Kelly Reagan. Dr. Kelly Reagan, chiropractic. 21 nothing to Cora. 4.53 to play here in quarter number one. Offense has scored twice. Special teams has scored once. Defense has turned the ball over. Or has taken the ball away, I should say, from Owine once tonight, so all three phases with a pretty good start to this one as Sweska will kick from left to right. Here's the approach. It's a short kick coming out of Ryan. Far side hash mark at the 9. Right straight ahead to the 10 to 15, 20. Opening to the 25 and Sweska hits him and drags him down across the 30 to the 34 yard line. So Ryan with a nice return. O'Wine with their best field position of the night. First and 10. 32 yard line. 21 nothing. They trail it with 444 to play quarter number 1. Pretty nice return there uh, for Ryan, uh, for O'Wine. Uh, definitely the most productive one they've had uh, so far to night and uh, got to be one of the longer ones the, that the Vikings have uh, allowed so far this season. First and 10 from the 33 yard line. Moving right to left, two receivers left, single receiver right. 
Rising in the pistol with backs to his back and to either side of him. Rising takes the snap, gives off the left side to Shannon, and nothing doing there as he is knocked back from the 32-yard line. Shannon got nothing on the play. Second down upcoming, Dustin Carey the stop. And uh, since that first down play on O-Line's second offensive possession when they picked up five yards, uh, the Decora defense has uh, done an excellent job just being uh, you know, as stingy as possible. And that was Anthony Jones on the previous carry. Second and 11 from the 33. Swing pass left side caught by DeCraw. Breaks the tackle at the 30 and gets hammered down by Sinkink on the near side numbers at the 36-yard line. It's a gain of four to set up a third and seven. Four-minute mark, quarter number one, 21 nothing Decora. Kind of just a little swing pass out uh, towards the sideline. Dylan Henning uh, had the initial contact. Uh, they broke away from that, but like you said, uh, Andy Sinkink coming over making a, a nice open field play. Third and seven from the 36. Receivers left and right. Pistol set. Double wing set. Shannon is the setback behind Rising who awaits the snap from his center Travis McMillan. Perhaps audibleizing now at the line of scrimmage. He'll take the snap. He'll drop back to throw. He's being chased. He throws over the middle. Incomplete. He overshot Tony Rex, who was covered well by Andy Sinkink, and Colin Nimrod on him almost had himself a pick. It's fourth down. And that's uh, that's one of those situations where, you know, as a safety, the, you know, they teach you to uh, play the man and not the ball in that situation. But, uh, you know, you almost wanted Colin to just play the ball on that one because if he had, he'd be running the other way. Well, right there, there wasn't any man there, was there? No, the ball was overthrown pretty yeah. pretty severely. Exactly. As the snap back to Ladderberg moves forward, gets the kick away. This one comes down to Jay Cubden, and Mr. Excitement makes the catch at the 30. He runs to his left of the 35, runs to the 40, and gets brought down at the 42-yard line. Ladderberg with a nice punt of... Uh, of that time, uh, 42 yards, but Jake brings it back 12. 3.15 to play here in quarter number one. Vikes will get the ball back, and they lead it by a 21 to nothing margin. And what you saw Olwine do uh, differently on that punt was uh, they had a nice, they did a nice job of containing the outside of the field. Uh, on the Sweska return for touchdown, he was able to get to the sideline and run in, and uh, they just weren't allowing that on that one. First and 10, 42-yard line for Bryce Pearson Company. He's under his center, Sean Truen. He takes the snap. He retreats in the pocket. He has time. He throws deep down the left side, going for Brighton. Mike who nearly came down with it amongst double coverage on the far side hash mark at the O-line 15-yard line. DeGraw and McMillan had the coverage, but I don't know about throwing into double coverage, but Meyer was legitimately the only uh, guy that had a chance to catch the football there, Chris. Yep, two defenders in the area, but Bryce uh, did a nice job of putting that ball out there, giving uh, Brighton at least a shot to catch that ball. And, you know, if he had come down with it, that uh, that probably would have been uh, an outstanding play. Second and 10, 42-yard line. Keen to the left side, heading off to the near side right. Sweska wing right, split backs. So far off, and Johansson. Pierce takes, throws the right side, catch made by Henning. He's inside the 50 and brought down at the 45-yard line. They'll mark him at the 46 in front of the Decora bench. It's a gain of 12 and a first down. Anthony Jones in on the stop. And uh, two passes in a row for the Vikings. You don't see that uh, happen too often, especially with uh, you know a little over three minutes to go in the first quarter. But uh, you know, definitely something the Vikings want to do is try to get that passing game uh, a little rhythm. First down and 10, 46-yard line after the first catch of the year for Dylan. Henning, 21 nothing. Decora. Pierce takes, gives to Savaroff, right side. Or correction, it's Sweska. He runs to the 40, speeds to the 30, 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Cole Sweska, his second score of the night. One was on a punt return. This one on a rush. It's his fourth overall score on the season, and it's 27 nothing. Decora. I mean, as a defense, I don't... I just don't understand how you allow Cole Sweska to get in that much open space. Uh, He ran right off the edge, made a cut to the inside, cut it back to the outside, and then just an unreal burst. And they're going to pitch it to Hovden, and Hovden's going to go in for two. As Owine did not cover the pitch man on the swinging gate, and for the second time this year, Jake Hovden will 
score on a two-point run, and it's a 29 nothing lead for Decora with 2.41 to play quarter number one. We'll keep it here during the break. We'll tell you that coming up tomorrow, it's Iowa football on FM 100.5. Hawks out at the horseshoe as uh, they will take on... Ohio State, 12.30 the pregame, 2.30 the kickoff on FM 100.5. And uh, here on AM 12.40 tomorrow, it's Luther and Wartburg, 12.50 the pregame. And and uh, at 1 o'clock the kickoff, uh, myself and uh, Tyler Rinkin on the call. Uh, my sources say he's uh, he wants to try out broadcasting a little <laughs> bit. Uh, I think he'll do a good job. I think uh, I think he'll definitely be uh, serviceable. Yeah, he'll be a poor man's Chris Wanless. I don't I don't know how it gets much poorer than the actual Chris Wanless. <laughs> oh, oh come on, buddy! <laughs> Here's the approach by Sweska and the kick. This one a little shorter, but good hang time to it as Ryan takes it at the ten, straight ahead twenty. He runs into Jacob, leaps and gets a race. A Richter scale type hit from Jacob Leaps right at the 20 yard line. And Boy. Leaps uh, on a couple of these kickoffs here early in the game. We've actually seen him run uh, run past the ball carrier, but uh, you know, with a lot of speed that time, just uh, picked the right gap, got through, and like you said, just hammered the ball carrier. So, first down and 10 at the 20-yard line. Rising takes the snap, rushes on screen pass. Right side catch made by Shannon, but loses his footing, and down he goes at the 20-yard line. Gain of zero. That screen was actually set up pretty well. Shannon keeps his footing. He might get a first down. Yeah, it's unfortunate uh, for Owine that he dropped that because, uh, you know, based on what Owine has done so far offensively and what they've seen from Decora, that was actually a pretty good play call. Uh, it was set up nicely, but, uh, you know, he just couldn't. Uh, hold on to the ball. Second and 10 at the 20 yard line. He did. He couldn't keep his feet, to be accurate. Second and 10, 20 yard line. Rising swings it out left side, going for DeGraw, and it's nearly intercepted as Brighton Meyer is down after falling on his side near the 40 yard line. He leaped and couldn't get up. And DeGraw was the intended receiver outside the numbers at the 40 yard line in Decorah territory. Meyer out, Henning in, third and ten Huskies. Brighton made a nice uh, nice play on the ball that time. Went up, uh, jumped for it, tried to get it at its highest point, but just uh, couldn't haul it in. Second or third and ten from the 20, give to Mason. Shannon runs up the middle, runs into a red and blue brick wall and gets rejected from the 21-yard line. As Shannon gets a yard, he was run into by Sean Truen and Corey Anderson, and it's fourth down for the Owine Huskies, and they're going to punt again. And another great job by this uh, Viking defense, forcing a three and out, getting the ball back uh, in the offense's hands, or you know, hopefully returning this uh, this kick for a touchdown. But I wouldn't be surprised if we see another kick out of bounds here. Ladderberg punting already for the fourth time tonight. Low snap, Ladderberg moves forward, gets the kick away, coming down to Sweska at the 50-yard line. Far side numbers, runs to the 45, runs into a wall right there and gets uh, knocked back from that point. So the punt goes 31 and a return of 5. So minute 19 to play quarter number 1. It's a 29 nothing lead for Decor up. Two touchdowns for Sweska. Two touchdowns for Holt Johansson. Sweska had a rushing touchdown. Johansson had a two rushing touchdowns. Sweska also had a punt return on the night. And the O-line offense has only gotten one first down against the Decora defense. Decora defense with one takeaway tonight as well. So all three facets of the game have come to play here tonight. Vikes left to right, football left to far side, hash mark. Pierce takes, gives to Jake Hubden, finds a gap off right side, running hard and pinballing off at defenders and finally gets wrestled down at the 36-yard line. A gain of eight yards for Jake Hubden. And Jake Hubden, uh, you know, obviously he's gotten a reputation. Uh, you know, you called him earlier Mr. Exciting because uh, when he's in the open field, he's got that breakaway speed. But uh, people sometimes, I think, underestimate his ability to combine that speed with a little bit of power, and we definitely saw it on that play. Second and two from the 36, heading to the left side. Colin Nimrod to the right side. Wing back left is Sweska. Dropping the throw is Pierce. Pierce swings it out right side, and it's dropped by Dustin Carey right at the 30-yard line. It was Carey, not Nimrod, split right. My bad. Cole Stanford and 
Chase Hershey in on the coverage. It's third down and two. And it looked uh, that time like it was just a little case of uh, Dustin thinking about getting up the field before he had the ball in his hands. Third down, two. 36-yard line, 29, nothing to Cora. 41 seconds to play here in quarter number one. Pierce takes the snap, drops back the throw, has plenty of time, throws the left side, going for Dustin Carey, and it's caught at the five! Touchdown! Carey was interfered with! There's a flag down, but despite that, Dustin caught the touchdown pass, and it will be 35 to nothing to Cora with 33 seconds to play here in quarter number one. Dustin fighting off some pretty uh, brutal <laughs> interference on that play. Uh, granted, he did have to turn around to uh, catch the ball. It was slightly underthrown, but the uh, you know as a defender, you've got to realize that doesn't give you the right to just grab onto the receiver. But uh, despite that, Dustin comes down with it and just waltzes into the end zone. By the way, uh, first quarter, West Delaware leading Crestwood 21 to nothing. Andy Sinkink trying to go. Four for four on the PATs. 33 seconds left, quarter number one. It is 35 to nothing to Cora. Swinging gate from the left hash mark to the center of the field. Carter Zidlicki snaps it to Drake Schuring, who puts it down for Andy Sinking's PAT. And scoring drive 44 yards in 42 seconds in three plays. Let's take a timeout here for Winnesheek Mutual Insurance. Thirty-six nothing. Decora leading. Thirty-four seconds left here in quarter number one. Thor is getting a workout with the push-ups down there. And he's crossing his legs after about every two. That takes uh, some serious cardio. He's not cheating. We'll tell him that much. As uh, Sweska's kick comes down to Ryan, who makes the catch at the three straight ahead. 5-10, he's to the 15, opening 20-25, and brought down near the 31-yard line. On special teams for the quarter that time was Colin Nimrod, first and 10 for O-line from that point. It's been all Vikings, 36 nothing as we head towards the end of the first quarter here. thing of it is, got to keep playing hard and keep that business-like approach at this point because things have come... Uh, very easy to you to this point, and you can't let up at all right now, Chris. No, you can't let up, first of all, because, you know, as a competitor, you just don't allow yourself to do it. Second of all, if you let up at all, you're putting yourself uh, at risk of getting hurt out there. Yep, exactly. Rising in the pistol and a double wing set. Here's the give up the middle to Gosling, or as Gosling brings down uh, Shannon at the 31 yard line as he tried the right side to no avail. So, no gain on the play. And quarter number one is done, and for the second consecutive year, Decora has a 35-plus lead on Owine at the end of the first quarter. 36 nothing. Decora leads it after one. And let's take a break for Paul Hudson, your State Farm Insurance agent. 36 nothing. Decora here at the end of the first quarter of play. And Chris Wanless says your first quarter stats brought to you, as always, by the sports shop. <laughs> Offensively uh, for the Vikings, Cole Sweska, only one rush, but uh, you know he made the most of it. One touchdown, that was a 46-yarder. Uh, Michael Suvarov, two rushes, 45 yards. Holt Johansson, two for 27 and two touchdowns. And Bryce Pierce, three of five for 58 yards and a score. Offensively for Owine, not a whole lot to, to talk about. Mason Shannon leading the way, eight rushes, but only 11 yards. Uh, you know... There's no other way to put it, really, Darren, than Decora just completely dominated that first quarter. And the Huskies will move from left to right for the second quarter, second and eight from the 32. Rising will take the snap, drops back to throw, swings it out right side, and he threw it short of Mason Shannon incomplete. And actually, Jonathan Ellsburn got his hand on that ball as well to deflect the pass. So it's third down upcoming. So 36 nothing, Decora. At the end of the first quarter and the early stages here in the second quarter, there's only been two, or correction, three snaps tonight in Decora territory. Two receivers left, single receiver right. Rising takes the snap on a third and eight. He'll throw the left side going for McGraw, incomplete, covered by Meyer, and it's fourth down upcoming. So 36 to nothing, Decora with the advantage. They have scored 
all five times they have touched the ball to this point. And after uh, things went easy for them down at Vinton Schillsburg, uh, there was a let-up at this point in the game. And you know what? Human nature, you might expect a little bit of a let-up, but you're going to try mentally not to do it because, you know what? Here in the not-too-distant future, you're going to have to play a lot of four-quarter games. Right. And, uh, you know, it, it's definitely something that uh, is probably in a, in a lot of these guys' minds. But, uh, you know, tonight you just got to focus on what you can do in this ball game. Kick coming down on the far side. Dustin Carey makes the catch at the 38, runs to the 45. He runs to the 50. Dustin Carey bouncing off of a couple of defenders, brings it to the near sideline, 40. He's to the 35, 30. Dustin to the 20, knocked out of bounds. At the 13-yard line, Dustin Carey with a 49-yard return after a 28-yard punt. And, you know, it's not really surprising to see Dustin Carey break something off like that. Uh, obviously, earlier in the year, we saw Dustin with, I think, a 90 or 90-plus 90 yard fumble yep. return for a touchdown. So, obviously, got some good open field speed, but uh, outstanding job on that play, breaking out of a, an ankle tackle and then getting to the sideline. First and 10, 13-yard line. This is Vikings Radio 1240 KDC to Cora and KDC Radio.net. Drake Schering is in a quarterback, Jacob. Leaps and Andrew Sinkick are in an eye formation. Brett LaRue to the left side. Colin Nimrod let wing back left. Give the leaps left side, and he is spun down near the 12. Nice uh, tackle on the play that time by Barnell Williams. It's a gain of zero action on the play. Second down, upcoming. It was just a give to uh, the fullback leaps on that kind of that option action that uh, the Vikings like to run. But uh, the old line. Defensive line being pretty stout. Uh, only three down linemen, but uh, they did a nice job on that play. Second and ten from the 13-yard line. Scurring in under his center, Carter Zidlicky with an eye formation and a wing left. Here's the give off the left side to Sinkink. He powers inside the ten and gets covered up on the near side. Numbers to the six. He is brought down on the play by Zach Lampier. It's a gain of seven yards. So a third down upcoming. 10.45 to play second quarter. 36 nothing to Cora. Off tackle running play, uh, you know, to the near side on that one. And, you know, the yards uh, coming a little tougher on this series. But, you know, they say anytime you get to inside, you know, kind of that 15-yard line, yards are a lot harder to come by. Third down and three from the 36-yard line. Or, or from the seven-yard line. Here's the option right side. Scurring makes the pitch to sink. He makes the catch outside the 12-yard line. He breaks a couple of tackles. He powers ahead to near the three-yard line, and he's going to get close to a first down. First of all, uh, the timing just wasn't there at all, but uh, Sinking caught the pitch kind of behind him, but uh, it was basically his effort that got the first and goal at the two. Pitch came uh, a little late from uh, Drake Scurring there, but... Uh you know, Andy Sickink doing a nice job reeling in the pitch and then cutting uh, upfield, making sure he didn't lose any yards, but then uh, obviously picking up the first down. DeCora now two for two on third downs. Heffern to the right side. Aaron Severson wing back right. Tight end left is Eric Severson. Split backs with leaps and sinking. Here's the give to leaps left side. Powers into the end zone for the touchdown. First varsity score for Jacob Leaps, and it's 42 0 to core up with 9.51 to play second quarter. A reminder running clock doesn't start till the second half. Same action we saw uh, basically as that first play of this series just to give up the middle to leaps. The fullback in that time able to just put his shoulder down, power his way. Into the end zone. Andy Sinkink will try for the PAT. From the left hash mark to the center of the field goes the swinging gate. Snap spot kick. It is up. It is good. It is 43 nothing to Cora with 9.51 to play here in the second quarter. We'll keep it here this time. Again, uh, Vikes doing what they need to do here tonight as uh, in West Delaware leads the Cadets second quarter 21-7 to in that ball game. If uh, whoever wins that one will get the number two seed out of this district. Haven't gotten an update on Independence and Western Dubuque. And uh, Independence uh, Western Dubuque winner will be the fourth qualifier out of this uh, Class 3A district number five tonight. And uh, if Western Dubuque wins, they could move up to the three seed with some help next week. Independence wins. Uh, this one is going to be uh, the seeds will all be set uh, because Decora, you can safely say, barring anything overly weird, will be the number one seed in the uh, district, leading 43 nothing 
with 9.51 uh, to play here in the second quarter. And uh, the winner of the Crestwood and West Delaware game will be the number two seed. The loser will be the number three seed in Independence and or Western Dubuque will be the four seed coming into tonight. So Sweska will kick off from right to left to restart the ball game. 43 nothing to Cora. Sweska's kick is real, real short, and this bounces at the 20 yard line, hops to the left. Ryan catches it at the 20, breaks tackles out across the 30, and Kyle Hageman was the man that brought him down at the 33 yard line. So 9.46 to play here in quarter number two. It is a 43 to nothing lead at Fort Cora. Austin Ashbacker, Sam Johnson. Also, Michael Savarov. Also, Cody Carlin up front for the Vikings. Kyle Kane and Holt Johansson at the linebackers. Cole Sweska, Dylan Henning at the corners right now. Taking the snap, rising, swings it out left side. It's absolutely dropped by Rex on the swing pass to the left side. In the secondary right now for the Coro will be Colin Nimrod, Jake Hubden, as well as Alec Felschul. So it's second down and 10 from the O-line. 33 yard line. Those swing passes and those out patterns seemingly have been there a few times tonight. And Rising's put the ball where he needed to, but he just hasn't gotten the help from the receiver that he needs. Yeah, a few drops. And you know, it's it's not to say that this Decor defense hasn't been dominant, but uh, O line definitely not helping. Give up so. the middle to Shannon, and he gets a race by the baby bull, Austin Ashbacker, who brings him down right at the line of scrimmage. It is third and ten upcoming. And you know, that's why. Uh, uh, O-line has got to try to uh, get those passes out to the flat because, uh, you know, they've tried going down the field. They've had two nearly intercepted. But, uh, you know, if that running game uh, isn't working, there's not much else you can do if uh, your receivers aren't catching the football. Third down and 10 from the 33-yard line. Double wing set. Receivers left and right. Pistol set. Rising takes the snap. And a counter play to the right side is covered up by Decora right near the line of scrimmage. It was... Rex bringing him down, getting brought down right at the line of scrimmage by Sam Johnson and by Austin Ashback. Or Sam Johnson, just there he is again, just your blue collar pro. Just making plays, you know. It's that uh, that mentality of, uh, you know, as long as I'm in the game, I'm going to give it all I've got. And uh, he's a prime example of that type of player. Fourth and ten from the 33-yard line. Jay Coven and Colin Nimrod back deep. Snap back to Latterberg in good shape. Moves forward, gets the kick away. Coming out of the far side, and Hubden makes the catch at the 40. Brings it to the sideline, 45-50, far sideline. And he steps out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Dragged out of bounds by Grant McMillan, a 12-yard return after a punt of 27. So another plus territory start for the Vikings. 8:24 to play quarter number two, a 42 or 43 to nothing lead. Vikes scored on a swinging gate extra point attempt after one of the touchdowns. Johansson has two of them. Dustin Carey with the touchdown catch, Sweska with the touchdown run, and a return, and Jacob Leaps with the touchdown as well. We'll get the, some of these uh, new players in the game as Leaps and Sinking will be in an eye formation behind Drake Schuring, who has the football on the right or far side hash mark as the Vikes go right to left at the 48. Schuring on a keep gets brought back from Zach Lamp- or by Zach Lampier back at the 47 yard line a loss of 5 yards on that belly attempt by Schuring second down upcoming so second and 15 it'll be back to the Decor 47 yard line just part of that field position equation this will only be the fourth snap of the night in Decor territory the wing back on the left side is Colin Nimrod. The split to the left side, Nolan Heffer and Eric Severson, the tight end on the right side. Schuring takes the snap, drops back to throw. Drake with time, throws the left side. Catch made by Heffer inside the 45, brought down by Mason Shannon in front of the Decorah bench at the 40-yard line. A 13-yard gain on the first varsity completion by Drake Schuring. His quarterback rating gets out of the negative territory. His only pass was intercepted down at Vinton Shelsbury. Yeah, it's a nice 
response there from Drake after uh, you know getting hauled down for a loss on the previous play. Uh, you know, just stood tall in the pocket, got it out uh, to the sideline, uh, picked up a nice game. That's Nolan Heffern's first varsity catch as well. Third down, two from the 40. 7-10 to play here in the second. 43 nothing to Cora. Here's the give to Sinkick. He tried to get away from a defender and could not as he was wrapped up on the play by Travis McMillan. Somebody missed a block, and it's a loss back to the 44, so a fourth down upcoming. And Decora going to keep the offense on the field right now. Austin Bohr is in at one of those offensive lineman positions. Carter Zidlicky, we mentioned, is the center. Dostal is in at one of the positions. Uh, we'll get the power. That w- Bohr and Dostal are the quick side right now. Fourth and six at the 44-yard line. Schuring takes the snap pitch to sinking. Turns up field. He's inside the 40. Runs to the 36, and he'll get the first down. He got a nice ballock out on the flank by the power guard, Grant Grinna, who was pulling that play. And Sinkick, uh, he runs hard. Uh, sometimes uh, maybe he runs uh, faster than his body, than his mind, his, his body's right in checks so that his mind can't, can't cash. But uh, he does a nice job in there. Yeah, kind of uh, fell forward. His momentum took him down. But, uh, you know, obviously after he picked up the first down. And uh, as you mentioned, Grinna out there pulling. Uh, a great job by the pulling linemen uh, so far tonight of the uh, Cora. First down and 10 at the 37 yard line. Halfway point, second quarter. It's 43 to nothing. Drop it a throw as Drake Schuring got away from one man. Hit as he throws over the middle and it's deflected and caught. A serendipitous catch for Andy Sinkick at the 15 yard line. Brett LaRue was the intended receiver. He couldn't corral it. Sinkick was in the neighborhood, caught the pass at the 15, and it's first down to Cora on a gain of 22 yards. Just as Adam Riley drew it up. And uh, <laughs> Sick Inc., uh, you know, maybe could have gotten a few more yards on that previous running play, but rewarded there with uh, some receiving yards. But give credit to uh, Drake Schuring standing in the pocket, eluding a tackle, and then getting the pass away. First and 10 at the 16 yard line. Schuring under his center. Zidlicky takes the snap, gives to Leaps. Powers off the left side. He's inside the 10 and down to the 6-yard line. So a gain of nearly 10 on the play for Leaps that time. So that other uh, lineman that is in the game right now at power tackle is, uh, or at power guard is Chris Hartman. The power tackle on that side is Grant Grinna. So... Nine-yard gain on the previous play, second down and one at the six-yard line. A lot of these are JV kids, and we'll talk about them in a moment. Brett LaRue to the left side, Colin Nimrod wing back left, Eric Severson the tight end right, leaps and sinking behind Drake Schuring, who takes the snap, gives off the right side to Leaps, who runs over to Fender, down at the one, but it'll be a first down and goal as he was dragged down on the play. JV finished his 2-0 season with 51-6 victory over Wacom here on Monday night, and uh, what my sources tell me was a very well-officiated game, but uh, nice to see these kids having success, Chris. Yeah, and you know, it's an extremely important part Part of the program, whether it's you know seniors that don't get to play a whole lot or juniors that are going to take that experience uh, into next year, as we've seen from a, a few of the guys that are big contributors at the varsity a varsity level this season. And a timeout is asked for by Owen. 4:32 to play here in quarter number one. It's a 43 to nothing lead for everybody. Max, make a wall. Max down. For step down. For uh, Decora again, uh, I guess we haven't previewed our halftime show yet. Uh, since Decora has officially qualified for the playoffs, we decided to take a look at Class 3A District Number Six. This guy was my guest on the Friday Sports Show this morning, and he w- we will replay that interview coming up uh, here. At halftime, Jeff Linder, one of the fine sports writers for the uh, Cedar Rapids Gazette, will replay that interview coming up at halftime. We'll also have a Viking sports report. Congratulations to the Decora Girls Cross Country Team Conference Championship uh, this week. Uh, boys finishing second. Ten straight conference titles for the Decora Girls. Amazing there, Chris. Yeah, and you know, it's, uh, it's something that... A lot of people maybe don't realize, especially during football season over the last couple years, uh, it's easy to overlook other things, especially, uh, it, well, it's easy to overlook things with the success of the, uh, the the football team, but it's hard to overlook the success uh, that the girls' cross-country program, both cross-country programs yeah. actually have had, uh, you know, in, in the recent past, so... 
It's uh, and Charles City uh, winning the conference title. Boys had won six in a row, and not bad when you're off your second place. <laughs> First down and goal at the one yard line. Split backs in the backfield, wing left, split to the left side. Heffern give off the right side to leaps. Noah Schurin keeps it. He got bobbled up and tripped over Andy Sinking. He kept his balance and got back to the one yard line. So no gain on the play. Second down and goal upcoming for the Coral with 4.18 to play till halftime. It is a lead of 43 to nothing for the Coral. And Drake on that play did well just to keep his balance. Uh, got tripped up almost immediately after the ball was snapped, but uh, got back at least to the, the line of scrimmage it looked like. Second and one from the one-yard line. Split backs in the backfield. Wing left is Severson. Split to the left side is Britt LaRue. Here is Schering. Takes, gives to Andy Sinkick. He's in. Touchdown. 49 nothing with 3.50 to play second quarter. Second touchdown of the season for Andy Sinkick. Just a classic Decora power football on that one. Andy Sinkick. putting the shoulder down, getting across the goal line, uh, and, you know, extending this already... Uh, uh, already big lead for the Vikings. 48 yards in nine plays. 4.34 off the clock. Cole Sweska will attempt his first PAT of the season. And Sean Denning will be the snapper. Colin Nimrod will be the holder. With 3.50 to play till halftime. Snap, spot, kick. Up, good. And it's 50 to nothing to Cora. Business-like approach being taken, and the Vikes uh, leading 50 to nothing uh, right now. We uh, do have to uh, send a shout-out because we uh, haven't uh, done this yet uh, on the air. Got to congratulate our uh, good friends because I know they're listening tonight. Uh, Jared and Rachel Schumann, uh, great uh, Viking fans. Uh, just a little over a week ago, Cooper Schumann came into the world. First uh, boy to... Uh, Join Kennedy and Kelby. Congratulations to them. And Cooper has yet to see the Vikings lose. Neither has Camille uh, Rukert, who came to the world in the playoffs, the daughter of uh, our uh, tr team trainer, Kelly Rukert, who does such a fabulous job. Taking care of Decorah student athletes. Sinking will kick. Deep kick to Ryan at the six, who drops it, picks it up again, and goes down to one knee and covers it up at the five yard line. So, just one of those nights for the Huskies, first and ten at the five yard line. Kind of a bizarre play there, but uh, all in all, probably the right decision actually to just uh, you know go down to a knee there with uh, six or seven guys bearing down on you 346 to play here in the second quarter 50 to nothing to Cora we'll get some of these uh, new kids in the game right now right at, now at the defensive ends right now is Logan Smithson at the corners, Nolan Heffern, uh, Adam Knight is in at a safety as is Connor Gossman. Give to Mason Channing, bouncing left to the outside. Got by Kyle Hageman. He moves across the five and gets covered up near the 10-yard line. Brett LaRue brought him down. Again, a four yards. Sam Johnson's in at that defensive line. Cody Carlin's in on the defensive line as well as Kyle Hageman. Right now, Aaron Severson is in at the linebacker position. The other linebacker right now is Dalton Harvey. Second and six from the nine. Drive it a throw is rising. Swings it out right side. Catch made by Shannon at the six. Runs ahead to the 15. He's to the 20. Brings it to the near sideline. 25 and gets wrestled out of bounds at the 23 or 28 yard line. Dalton Harvey knocked him to the sideline as well as Easton Schmitz. And a gain of 19 to a first down with 3.05 to play here in the second quarter. 50 to nothing to Cora. Not uh, not great uh, angles to the football being uh, taken on that last play. You know, granted, these are guys that might not get uh, a whole lot of game action, but you'd still like to see them be able to make those uh, kind of fundamental plays. Rising takes the snap, gives on a wing back, sweep to the left side. Grant McMillan turns up field and across the 30 and gets covered up near the 32-yard line. 
Kevin Downing is in on the defensive line now for the Cora, as well as Cody Zidlicky. Sean Denning is uh, now in at a linebacker, as well as Easton Schmitz. Brett LaRue, Nolan Heffern is in at the corners right now. Connor Gossman, Adam Knight, and Cole Rohr in at the safety. Second and six from the 33 with two and a half to play first half. 50 to nothing to Cora. Rising takes, gives to Shannon, runs into Kyle Hageman and gets dumped back at the 31-yard line. Kyle Hageman with his first TFL of the season. He's another one of those seniors that uh, doesn't uh, get to play a lot regularly, makes his impact on special teams, and made an impact right there, Chris. Yeah, he got up the field quickly. Uh, might have shed a block over there on the far side, but uh, regardless, gets into the backfield and uh, you know stuffs it for a loss. Third and six from the 32-yard line. Taking the snap, rising, dropping back to throw. Under pressure, throws the right side. Catch made by Shannon. Wrestled down very nicely by Connor Gossman at the 30-yard line. It's a loss of two. That's a great play by Gossman out there uh, on that screen pass. Uh, obviously, it's something O-Line has tried to set up a, a couple times here tonight, but Gossman just being uh, fundamentally sound and you know staying where he's supposed to be ends up uh, getting credit for a TFL there. So, Ladderberg on in punt formation. Dustin Carey and Callan Nimrod back deep for Decora. Minute 22 left here in the second quarter. It's a 50 to nothing lead for Decora. Ladderberg moves forward, gets the kick away. Coming down on the far side, it bounces at the 45. Dustin Carey going to catch it at the 30, running up field to the 35. And Carey gets covered up near the 37 yard line with a minute six to play till halftime. So, First down and 10 for that point for Decora. Some of the kids that will be on the offensive line right now include Taylor Numidal coming in. Also, Carter Zidlicky will be in on the offensive line as well. Don't forget Jeff Linder coming up at halftime, as well as a Viking sports report, as well as a recap of this 150 to nothing Decora. And if you do what you should, it should be a very quick second half tonight. Receivers left and right. Sam Johnson and Andy Sinkick in the backfield. Drake Schuring is in at quarterback. Pitch goes to Sammy J up the left side. Runs to the 40. Runs to the 45 to the 50. Sam to the 40. Near sideline 30. 25 and knocked out of bounds. That a baby Sam. 43 yard gain. First down to Cora. Sam had a couple of touchdowns in the JV game the other night. And great to see a kid like that uh, having some uh, success under the lights on a Friday night. You know, we've seen him in uh, in other facet, facets of the game, uh, particularly special teams, but getting a chance to really uh, show off his skill set there, showing uh, a little speed that I'm not sure we knew he had. And with, I love Sam, but he might not have known he had that speed. First down and 10, 21-yard line. Under center is Schuring. Schuring with plenty of time, throwing the right side. Catch is made by Eric Severson. He's inside the five. He's fighting inside the five and gets brought down near the three. Severson, his second varsity catch. A gain of 18 and a first down on a pretty well-thrown ball by Derek Schuring. Great throw and catch there uh, from Schuring to Severson, but uh, I'll go back and give credit again on that play to uh, Sam Johnson uh, out of the backfield uh, helping out in the pass protection. Inside of 40 seconds to play till halftime. First and goal at the three-yard line. Scurring under his center, Carter Zidlicky. Johnson and Sinkink in the backfield. Here's the give to Andy right side behind Johnson, fighting to the goal line, and he'll get brought down near the one-yard line. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, Decora does here. You want to give these kids an opportunity to score, but... uh, you can see why they wouldn't call a timeout in a situation like this as well. So, seven seconds to play till halftime. They're going to let it run out. Uh, not a lot to say other than the score right now, Chris. Fifteen to nothing, Decora. Yeah, just uh, great, great job by Decora coming out, doing exactly what uh, we talked about in the pregame. Just approaching this with a business-like attitude, coming out right away, setting the tone, getting the job done, and uh, you know just. 
pretty much complete domination. All right, uh, that's Chris Wanless's halftime thoughts. When we come back, we will have our halftime show. We'll talk to Jeff Linder of the Cedar Rapids Gazette after this. 50 to nothing to Cora at the half. Let's take a break for Jeff's auto repair and for Spot and Rose Lumber. Those details and sometimes when uh, maybe you do have a little bit more advantage over a team, uh, you still want to make sure that you don't get sloppy on the little things. And we know, like on our kickoff coverage, we can do a little bit better job. They're getting more yardage. and Our kicks are kind of a little bit inconsistent in terms of where they're landing at. Uh, dial that in, being able to break down uh, the few opportunities that they have where they've gotten some situations. You know, we've been in some good spots, but uh, haven't quite broken our hips down and, and got our feet apart. And those are things we can improve. And, of course, we're going to be working on our depth here in the second half. Uh, if things go the way that we hope, it's probably going to be moving along pretty quick. Uh, but the kids that are out there in the field, we want to keep coaching them up and uh, working on their fundamental skill set. And uh, those uh, JV kids that played at the end of the first half uh, seemingly kind of picked up where they left off on uh, Monday night after a nice JV victory. Well, you know, they, it, it's amazing, those kids. Um, you know, you work hard to get them reps in practice, but you know you don't ever get the number that you really would like as a team. And and uh, to see them come out on Monday and function the way that they did, uh, their execution, uh, they, they continually amaze us from year to year, that uh, they go out there and it, it makes us proud as coaches because kids are paying attention. Uh, even if they're not physically doing the reps, uh, they are doing them mentally. And uh, it's great to see them to be able to come out in a situation like this and uh, continue to do great things and uh, show that they understand the system of the core football. And uh, your sophomores this week traveled down to North Fayette on Tuesday, ended up losing that game 30-16. to My sources tell me, it was a very well officiated game, uh, but uh, you had your chances in that ball game. But uh, North Fayette uh, was a pretty good opponent as well. Well, you know they're a team that they're having a great season in their underneath levels. There, uh, I was Coach Helwig and I were very impressed with their linemen. Uh, that's one of the areas that we really challenged our kids. That uh, we thought we played against a team with uh, great interior guys, both on the offensive and defensive ball. And we need to work hard, uh, you know, in the weight room in the off season uh, to be able to ele- elevate ourselves to that level. We were very thankful for North Fayette uh, Valley to uh, allow us to come down there. You know, that was a last minute kind of thrown together about four days in advance uh, where they had lost a game. Of course, we had lost some games uh, earlier this year. And, uh, you know, I think they were happy to have us come down there because it was a good ball game. We're about a 16-8 to eight score in the third quarter. Uh, challenged them a little bit and uh, just gives us an opportunity to go out and continue work on things. And uh, it's fun when you play one of those games where you don't spend a lot of preparation work uh, to see what the kids can do when they get on the field and see if they can make those adjustments. So, um, you know, we didn't come up with a victory, but we're still moving in the right direction. All right, uh, we'll let you get back to work, Coach. Thank you very much. Thanks, Aaron. Have a good one. All right, uh, Jeff Friedoff talking here at halftime. Got to have a little bit extended of a halftime, and he's heading back down to the sidelines. He came up to the booth just to talk to us. Uh, either uh, he really enjoys these post pregame uh, conversations or, or these halftime conversations, or he appreciates me shoveling his walk a few times uh, when he was <laughs> in a warmer climate last uh, February and March. Granted, winter in Decorah lasted until about May last year. So, so anyway, uh, Decorah will get the football to start the second half here. And that, that's another thing you just really enjoy about this coaching staff. Yeah, you can look at the scoreboard and the stat sheet, and you can be happy about a lot of things, but that whole attention to detail thing is what, to, to me, separates this staff from a lot of other uh, staffs. Uh, the bottom line is, uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, you can do better on the kickoff coverage. We can break down a little better. You can block this a little better. And uh, those minor details, uh, those that's the and the kids' willingness to pay attention to those minor details, uh, that's uh, really what wins your ball games. Yeah, and that's how uh, that's how you just don't allow yourself to get complacent. Uh, you know, a lot of people would look at a, a 50 nothing score and say, you know, things went perfectly, but uh, obviously, as a coaching staff, there's always going to be things that you're looking to clean up. Here is the approach by Owine and the kick. This uh, kick going to be on the ground, and it's going to be taken by Savaroff at the 34-yard line, and he kind of slides to a stop. Hit there by Mason Shannon at the 36-yard line. So the Vikes will move right to left offensively, first down and 10 at the 36-yard line. So Bryce Pearson Company will be in, as you would expect, because you want to give uh, probably your offense and defense uh, defensive teams uh, on the clock. Uh, yeah, a series uh, here in the uh, second half. So, I formation uh, in the backfield. Swesco wing left. Here's the give to Savaroff right side hole. He runs across the 45 and brought down at the 41 yard line. 
Cool. Stanford, uh, the man that brought him down. And uh, just getting back to the uh, point, uh, you probably want to give your offense and defensive number ones uh, a chance to uh, just uh, work out some kinks uh, here in this first drive of the second half. Yeah, especially, you know, if you've made adjustments uh, at halftime, you want to come out and make sure that, uh, you know, those adjustments have gotten through. Second and five from the 41-yard line I formation. Meyer split to the left side. Give off the left side to Savaroff. Runs across the 45. Wrestle down at the 49-yard line. Between the numbers and the hash mark on the near side, Mason Shannon, the man that brought him down, a gain of eight to a first down. And uh, Suvarov uh, on the first drive, uh, first offensive drive uh, for Decora, busted off a couple of long runs. Now uh, a couple intermediate gains, but doing a nice job of getting through the hole and uh, really doing a, a nice job of protecting the football. First and 10, 49 yard line to Cora Territory. Vikes moving right to left, football left or near side hash mark. Pierce under his center, Sean Truen takes the snap. Keeps it or gives it to Johansson, who powers up the near side hash mark and gets brought down near the 41 yard line. Gain of nearly nine on the play, brought down on the play by Zach Lamphere. Good hesitation move by uh, Johansson that time. Yeah, and that, uh, uh, part of that is uh, uh, kind of a progression we've seen from Bryce Pierce this year is that doing a lot better job of really riding that uh, fake, uh, you know, when he keeps it, but that time giving it away and a uh, nice gain there for Holt. Second and one from the 42 yard line, 50 to nothing to Corey Give to Holt right side, first down and more across the 40 to the 37 yard line. And a gain of five yards. He was brought down to the play by Anthony Jones. So good, uh, efficient uh, start to the second half. One stat uh, I researched about Holt Johansson this week, and the uh, streak continued. We won't count a couple of games he started early in his sophomore year that he was the punter, but in every game in his junior and senior year, he's had a run of at least 10 yards. So uh, we'll expand on that here in a second. First down and 10, 37 yard line, 50 to nothing to Cora with nine and a half to play in the third. High formation in the backfield here is Pierce. Uh, dropped the football after faking it to Johansson and gets covered up near the 37 yard line and uh, brought down on the play by Cole Stanford. It's a long Loss of a yard on the play, second and 11. Yeah, and, uh, you know, that's, you know, one of those things where you come out, uh, big lead, but, uh, you know, you still have a miscue like that. Definitely something that, uh, you know, you're going to take a look at on film if you're Bryce and, uh, you're going to say, well, that's uh, definitely one thing I can do better is uh, handle that, uh, first of all, that center exchange, but then if I'm keeping the ball, uh, make sure to secure it. Second and 11 from the 38-yard line. Pierce takes the snap, gives on a wing back, sweep to Sweska, gets a block from Cole Hamilton, runs to the 35 to the 30, 25, and gets brought down inside the 20 at the 19-yard line. Nice interference out front from Kyle Kane and Michael Savaroff, a gain of 16 and a first down for Sweska. They didn't let him have the sideline that time, though. No, and that's something that uh, O-Line has done a better job of ever since that punt return uh, for touchdown that Cole had in the first quarter. They uh, they haven't been allowing these uh, Decora runners to get uh, down the sideline and have that uh, green in front of them. First and 10, 19-yard line. Meyer left, wing left is Sweska, tight end right is Kane. I formation with Johansson and Savaroff. Under center is Pierce, takes to, gives to Michael, right side, runs to the 15-10, lowers the shoulder inside the 5 and gets brought down. Near the four-yard line. A gain of 15 and a first and goal as we go inside of eight minutes to play here in the third. It's 50 to nothing to Cora. And the Vikes trying to score on that first drive of the second half once again. And Savarov uh, just seeing the hole right away, making the proper cut, uh, you know, turning on that uh, that second level that he has. And uh, at the end of the play, putting his shoulder down, getting the extra yards. But uh, Vikes in good position to put another score on the board. First and goal at the four-yard line. I formation, Johansson and Savaroff. Wing left is Sweska. Here's Pierce keeping it on the left side. Dances into the end zone for the score. It's 56 to nothing. Decora as Bryce Pierce with his fifth rushing touchdown this season, his third in the last two weeks. And uh, just a little keeper there. And, you know, we saw earlier in the drive, Kept it, tried to keep the ball off the edge and, uh, you know, mishandled it, put it on the ground. But uh, that time, keeps it, cuts uh, cuts right up the field at the proper time and uh, goes in for the score. Carter Zidlicki will snap it to Colin Nimrod, who will hold it for Cole Sweska's PAT attempt. Snap, spot, kick, up. No good. He pushed it to the far right side. 7.27 to play. Third quarter, 56 nothing to Cora. Let's take a break for Deco Products and for Hubden Oil. 
Here is Sinking's kick. It comes down to Barron as he moves ahead from the 15, 20, 25, 30, and uh, Brendan, Brennan Ryan across the 30 to the 34-yard line. So first down from that point, 7-16 to play. The Vikings will uh, keep a lot of their number ones in for their second half. Sean Truen and Michael Ruiz. And a tackle, Savaroff and Severson at the ends. Johansson and Keene at the linebackers. Sweska and Henning at the corners. Secondary right now, Nimrod, Carey, and Hovden. First and 10, 34-yard line rising. Takes the snap, pumping, rolling to his left side. Chased by Ruiz, throws the left side incomplete, going for DeGraw. And Colin Nimrod almost had himself a pick again at the 37-yard line. Yeah, he forced out of the pocket there and, uh, you know, just had to make a decision before he was uh, taken down for the sack. Threw it to the sideline, which, uh, you know, good cover out there by uh, Nimrod, but honestly, probably the right decision uh, by the quarterback to just kind of throw it towards the sideline. Latest we got from Manchester, 28-21, West Delaware leading Crestwood at the half. You're welcome, Jared Schumann. First down and 10, <laughs> or second and 10 from the 34-yard line. Left side moves early, and uh, it will be a illegal procedure against the Huskies, second penalty on them tonight for a total of 15 yards to court one penalty, 10 yards. So, back we go, second down, 15 from the 29-yard line, halfway point, third quarter. This is Vikings Radio 1240 KDC to Cora. Rising takes the snap on the rush, right side, dump right, catch by Shannon, sandwiched down between Kyle Kane and Dustin Carey at the 31. He got three, but he paid the price for it. It's about the fourth or fifth time they've tried to target Shannon uh, out in that flat area, but, uh, you know, did a nice job on that one securing the football, which, uh, you know, we've seen uh, these O-line receivers drop some passes tonight, but really uh, after he caught it, he had no chance. Third and 12 from the 32. O-line moving left to right, trailing 56 to nothing. Two receivers left, two receivers right. Rising in the gun, Shannon behind him. Rising takes the snap, has time, throws the left side, going for DeGraw, incomplete, covered by Sweska, fourth down. Just uh, overthrown again. We've seen him overthrow uh, you know, three or four receivers tonight, and you know it's not even it hasn't even been overthrows where the receiver could have made a play on the ball. It's just been uh, you know severely overthrown. After that first drive here in the second half, Decora has scored a touchdown on their first drive in 18 of the second half and 18 of their last 22 games. And O-line takes time out, 4.50 to play third quarter. It is a 56 to nothing lead for Decora, and let's take a break for Wicks Construction. New punter in the game for the Huskies, this is Anthony Jones. He will kick to Hovden and Nimrod. Snap back, good shape, moves forward, gets the kick away. This one going to go straight in the air. You can hear the yell of Peter over the valley. The punter Jones covers up the ball at the 38-yard line. It ends up being a 7-yard punt. So first and 10 from the 38-yard line with 4.32 to play here in the third. 56 nothing to Cora. And the new players in the game for the Vikings include Drake Schuring at the quarterback position. The offensive line has uh, Carter Zidlicki at the uh, center position. Austin Bohr is in at one of the tackles. The other tackle right now, I believe, is uh, is uh, Grant Grinna. We'll uh, double-check everything here. First and 10, 38-yard line. Give us to Jacob Leaps right tonight. Gets tripped up inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. A gain of five yards for Leaps. Uh, let's see. Uh, go, go ahead, Chris. I'm we've gonna... seen uh, we've seen Leaps with a few carries tonight, and it's just kind of been that classic uh, Decora motto, that it, the old three yards in a cloud of dust, not picking up you know huge yards, but uh, being very effective. Tyler Dostel is in at the power guard. Power tackle is Boar Zidlicki is the center right now. Second and four from the 33-yard line. Schering takes the snap, gives to 
The man uh, sinking, sinking, finds a hole inside the 20 on a sweep to the left side. He cut it back in inside the 20 and down. He went at the 17-yard line. Had Chris Hartman pulling from the power guard position out front and doing a nice job. So... Nice job by Andy Sinkink, and it's a first down from the 18-yard line. Great recognition uh, once he got to the second level that there was a cutback lane there. He took it and uh, probably got about seven or eight extra yards because of it. Inside of three minutes to play in the third, 56 to nothing to Cora. First and 10, 17-yard line for the Vikings. LaRue left. Here's the give to Leafs right side. Big hole inside the 10 and upended. Inside the 5, down he goes at the 5-yard line. Taylor Numidal is playing the power tackle right now, but another nice run and a 13-yard gain to a first and goal. Vikes have scored every time they've had the football except one tonight. And they're looking to keep this trend going. And First and goal, it'll be at the 5 with 2.16 to play in a quick-moving third quarter, as you would expect with the clock running. Tight end on the right side is Harvey. Wing back left is Aaron Severson. Split to the left side is Heffern. Here is Schuring. Tried to keep it on the belly right side. Breaking tackles inside the five. Lunching to the goal line. He's in. First varsity touchdown for Drake Schuring. Decora 62. 0-1. Nothing a minute. 55 to play here in the third quarter. It wasn't pretty, but Drake showed some toughness there. Yeah, and that's the second time he's uh, been out there on the edge on a keeper that's gotten uh, disrupted at the line of scrimmage. Both times he's done well just to keep his balance, but this time, uh, you know, makes it even uh, more worth it. Goes in for the score. So, Carter Zidlicki will snap it for Colin Nimrod's hold for... Cole Sweska's PAT is Kevin Downing. A little late coming on the field. West Delaware has taken a 35-21 lead on Crestwood. In the District 6 championship, McCook at halftime leading Solon 17-7. Low snap, gloved will by Callan Nimrod. And the kick is up, and it is good. 63-0 to Cora. Minute 55 to play in the third. And this for the A&J Petersburg Agency Insurance and Real Estate. 3 nothing. the score. After a five-yard touchdown run by Drake Schuring, his first varsity touchdown. Viking touchdowns tonight. Sweska a punt return. Johansson a 12-yard touchdown run. Johansson a 15-yard touchdown run. Sweska a 46-yard touchdown run. Pierce to carry for 36. Leaps for two. Sinking for one. Pierce for four. Schuring for five. Ryan makes the catch at the five up the near side. Numbers across the 30 to the 35 and brought down at the 36-yard line. And we can safely talk about it now and we will not bring this up until uh, this uh, 2013 season is done, but this win tonight gives Decora their second longest winning streak in school history. This will be the 22nd consecutive win, surpassing a total from the 1967 through 70 teams, which was 21 wins in a row. Rising at quarterback, double wing set. Shannon is the lone setback out of the pistol. Give to Jones on a sweep to the left side. Breaks the tackle across the 40. Cuts it back to the left and gets finished off at the 43-yard line. A gain of six yards as he was finished off on the play by Jordan Schaller. Second down upcoming. The longest winning streak uh, was 88-90, to 90, and that was 23 wins in a row. The last four of 88, 12 and 0, and 89, and the first seven of the 1990 season. Second down and four from the 43-yard line. So Rising takes the snap, gives to Shannon, plows head off the left side, gets a first down inside the 50, and gets covered up at the 49-yard line. When you look at uh, those to- numbers, uh, it's difficult to compare eras, and it's difficult to compare teams because you'll never see those teams when they were 17, 18, 19, or 16 to 18 years old primarily against these teams when they were 16 to 18 years old. But uh, all in all, uh, we'll let you uh, chime in after this play. A very impressive total pitch to Shannon. Left side gets covered up by Logan Smithson as he tried to cut it back at the 50. It's a loss of a yard. So... 
<laughs> all in all, uh, you look at uh, that uh, win total, very, very impressive, Chris. Yeah, and, you know, I I can't uh, speak a whole lot on the, you know, the 60s. Uh, I can't either. <laughs> era of Decorah football. But, uh, you know, you don't go through this program without hearing at least a little bit about that uh, that group uh, in the late 80s, early 90s. And anytime you're talking about matching something they've done, that's uh, that's impressive company. 63 nothing Decorah as we go to the fourth. Let's take a break for Greg and Marty Wise with Plan 1 Financial. 63 nothing to Cora. Stats mm-hmm. after three. Brought to you as always by the Sports Shop. Uh, Michael Savarov leading to Cora uh, in the ground game. Five carries, 73 yards. Cole Sweska, two for 65 and a touchdown. Holt Johansson, four for 41 and two touchdowns. And Jacob Leaps, six for 36 yards and a touchdown. Bryce Pierce, 3 of 5, 58 yards and a score uh, through the air. Drake Skurring, 3 of 3 for 51 yards. So, second and 11 from the 50, right to left go the Huskies. Give off the right side to Tony Rex. Plows ahead inside the 40 and gets dragged down at the 39-yard line. It will be a first down. So... Some more uh, stats of interest there, uh, C-Dubs. Uh, I mean, for O-Line, leading rusher at this point, uh, Mason Shannon, 13 uh, carries, only 21 yards. Uh, that's an average of only 1.6 yards, uh, if you can't do the math in but your you, head. But you took a Jeff Fried off math class. And, uh, you know, if you just look at total offense, O-Line, 35 plays, 39 yards. Decora 40 plays, 380 yards. Rising takes snap first and 10 from the 39. Give to Shannon. He slips the defender in the backfield and gets covered up near the 36-yard line. So the uh, players in the game right now for Decorah in the secondary, Cole Rohr, Adam Knight, and Alec Felschel at the safeties. Also Nolan Heffern and Brett LaRue at the corners right now. The linebackers are Sean Denning as well as, uh, it appears, Dalton Harvey, and up front, Cody Carlin, Sam Johnson, also Logan Smithson, and Kyle Hogman. Second and seven from the 36. Rising takes the snap. Everyone knew the snap count, except the most important guy, the center. It's second down and 12. It'll be with 10.49 to play here in the ballgame. A 63 to nothing score. Decora on top. And the Vikings, uh, and the uh, Vikings, uh, one over Owine last year, 63 to nothing as well. So one more week left in the regular season. A trip down to Epworth next Friday night, and then a week from Wednesday night, the fun begins of the Iowa High School playoffs. Here is the give off the left side to Shannon. Plows the head off left guard, and down to the 38-yard line, Sam Johnson, Kyle Hageman, Sean Denning all there, a gain of three, so it's third down and nine upcoming. It's pretty hard to believe that... Uh Next week is already going to be the regular season finale. Well, as usual, when it comes to high school football, time flies when you're having fun. So, third and nine from the 39-yard line, rising throws the screen right side. It's bobbled and dropped by Shannon, and it was defended pretty well on the left side there, or on the right side of the offense, left side of the defense. By Logan Smithson in his fourth down. Uh, it's a play that Owine ran uh, initially when uh, they looked like they had it set up pretty well, but uh, the ball carrier lost his footing. Since then, Decora has looked uh, pretty prepared for it. So, uh, you know, I guess they're going to keep trying it, uh, but right now the Owine uh, receivers can't catch anything. Fourth and nine, 37 yard line, drop and throw, rising, firing over the middle, incomplete. Went for DeGraw, had it on his hands, and couldn't corral it at the 25 yard line. So it is first down and 10 the other way from the 38 yard line. DeCora leading 63 to nothing in this one, as basically you're just uh, letting the clock uh, run out in this one and giving some. Uh, Twos and threes, some valuable experience. Is Colin Nimrod going to get his first uh, varsity snaps right here? But, as we all know, Colin, not a kid that's uh, been unfamiliar with uh, varsity competition, was a key part of the uh, state uh, 
Runner-up run in baseball a couple years ago. Sam Johnson and Sinkink on the offensive line. Nimrod takes gifts to Sammy J. Plowing over, guys, inside the 45 and up to the 48-yard line. He's going to have a first down. Sam Johnson getting his Mark Wiseman on there. Showed a, a little bit of a, a little bit of speed earlier in the game coming down this near sideline, but on that play shows off uh, the power uh, part of his game. Just kind of put the shoulder down, kept the feet driving, and uh, drove the defense back about four or five yards. Second and nine and one, it'll be after the nine yard gain. Aaron Severson wing left, Nolan Heffern split left. Here is Nimrod taken, given to Sinking, runs into his own blocker, plows ahead off left tackle inside the 50 to the 48 yard line. It'll be a first down. And a gain of uh, four yards on that play. So the thing of it is with these guys that are in the game right now, they don't get to practice to chorus stuff together very often. So often they're the scout teams, and uh, really their execution, I think, has been uh, probably as good as you can expect it to uh, here in tonight's ball game, as Nimrod takes the snap, keeps it on the belly right side, plows ahead to the 46-yard line as he was brought down by Anthony Jones, second down upcoming. Oh, and like you alluded to, it's kind of one of those things where early in the year, you know, going into camp, you, you have to realize that if you're one of those guys that might not, uh, you know, be part of the starting unit. That, those are really the guys that really have to commit to uh, the playbook and learning yep. what uh, they have to do because they don't get to practice it uh, day in and day out. Turkey Valley leading Postville 34-21 in the fourth quarter, second and eight from the 46-yard line. Here is the give to Sam Johnson, bounces off a couple defenders and gets dragged down by a lamp fair at the 42-yard line. Up front uh, right now, it's Grant Grinnett, Carter Zidlicky, Austin Bohr, as well as... Uh, Chris Hartman, as well as Taylor Newmanall, I believe. So it's third down, six upcoming for Decorah with 6.37 to play here in the fourth quarter, a 63 nothing lead for Decorah. Actually, on the power side, it's Grant Grinna on that, uh, t- at that tackle position right now. Third and four from the 42, pitch to Sinking left side, gets blocked from Grinna, moves ahead to the 40, tries to cut it back, runs into Austin Jones, gets covered up at the 36-yard line, but a gain of six yards and a first down upcoming. Also got some help on the flank from Dalton Hervey at that tight end position. Had a lot of uh, room to the to the edge there uh, if he wanted it, but uh, decided to cut it back up the field, uh, ultimately picked up the first down and uh, you know kept the chains moving, kept the drive moving. New Hampton leading Union, third quarter, 35-3. to That'll be an undefeated matchup. New Hampton walk on in week number nine next week. Assuming walk on can get by Hampton Dumont. First and 10, 36-yard line. Colin Nimrod on the belly keep right side. A block from Sinkick, and Colin gets brought down at the 30-yard line. Anthony Jones, the man that brought him down. <laughs> Uh, Western Dubuque leads Independence 14-7, 6-41, third quarter. Waverly Shorrock leading Charles City 31-0. Spencer leading Algona late third quarter 35-6. Second and four from the 35 minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. 63-0 to Cora. Colin Nimrod takes gifts to Andy Sinking left side, and Sinking will plow ahead and get to the 29-yard line. So Cody Carlin will come in on the offensive line, and as Zach Lamphere is, uh, I believe, uh, down in pain for O-Wine and uh, the training staff heading out to help him out, walk on. You know what? Asking you shall receive. This is what what's great about our listening audience. Gavin Nimrod was just up here. <laughs> I mentioned walk-on score. Don't know it. He get, sends me a text. Walk-on up on Hampton Dumont. 40 to nothing. So 442 uh, left, and Owen is uh, going to head to uh, the sidelines. And let's take a time out here. Thanks some of our great sponsors. 63 nothing to Corin. Let's take a break for. Rockweiler Appliance and TV. 
Still attending to the injured uh, Husky. We do not know who it is as he is on his back in the 30-yard uh, line. As uh, both uh, the Husky training staff as well as uh, Kelly Rucker, Dr. Dave Mayer, and uh, the Husky coaching staff uh, out there assisting to the young man. And on a night like this, uh, this is the last thing you want to see uh, for any uh, young person in a situation like this, Chris. Yeah, and you know, uh, you know, on either side of the ball, yeah, there, exactly. it's, uh, you know, a game that's. Uh, for, for all intents and purposes, over, uh, and, you, and you know you, you lose a player uh, to an injury this late uh, in a game. It's uh, you know, like you said, definitely something that uh, you never want to see. Western Dubuque has taken a 27 to seven lead on Independence with 105 left in the third quarter. Cardinals leading the Dodgers five nothing in the fifth inning. <laughs> Adam Riley just tells me I'm number one after telling him that. So, hey, I've been a Dodger fan all week there, buddy. As fellow Cub fans here in this booth, we can't root for that team uh, wearing red. Yeah, so, and and they are uh, bringing the stretcher out. and Man, you hate to see that damn thing come out, Rich. Uh, uh, there, uh, Chris. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it, it, we can't really tell. Uh, you know, there's a... A bunch of people out there. Both uh, both head coaches are out there, and uh, obviously the training staff. We're we're not really sure from our vantage point what uh, exactly they're looking at. But uh, like you said, Darren, anytime the uh, the stretcher has to come out, definitely not a good situation. And uh, see uh, Mike Ashpacker, EMT from Wonderfeet Medical Center, out to assist with the situation and. I tell you what, we'll take another time out here. 4:42 left, 63 nothing at Decorah with the lead, and uh, we will uh, take a break uh, here and uh, hear from uh, Vic Heating and Plumbing and from uh, Dick Kubler and Troy Whitehill with Edward Jones Investments. Still attending to the Owain Husky player that is down on the sideline, and it looked like uh, the parents of the player uh, came out on uh, to the field, and they will. Uh, Lift the uh, player onto the stretcher, and you can uh, only hope this is uh, all precautionary. We should point out he was uh, he was moving. Yes, when exa- they came exactly. Out, so, uh, good, good call there, Chris. As uh, the Huskies are all down on one knee. The Vikings waiting patiently uh, here on the near side. Head coach Bill Post and assistant coach Joel Rollinger talking to uh, Scott Whitehill, the official. 63 nothing to Cora with 4.42 to play here in the third quarter. And uh, again, we don't have a clear identification on the Husky player that is down. Uh, Otherwise, we would uh, tell you in this situation. So, yes, sir. And you never want to see this uh, situation uh, happen. And you know, from uh, being a Decorah Viking athlete and a Decorah Viking football player. Uh, if the worst does happen, uh, you got uh, two gar- darn good uh, professionals and uh, Dr. Dave Mayer and uh, Kelly Rucker to uh, look out for the young be- uh, the uh, young people's uh, well-being to the absolute best of their ability. And uh, they're one of those uh, unsung people that uh, just help out the football program in uh, their own special way. Yeah, and you know. Uh we we were always uh, very fortunate to have uh, obviously Dr. Mayer and and Kelly down there. Kelly, uh, you know, on a day to day basis was uh, you know willing to really help out in uh, any way she could uh, when it came to uh, you know the the medical situation of the of the football team. And uh, obviously Dr. Mayer down there uh, with his expertise, uh, you know, just uh, just a very fortunate situation uh, for these Decora players, especially to have those two people uh, on the sideline with them every Friday. We'll uh, try to uh, we'll try to get the uh, situation and this this brings back uh, one of the uh, dis- 
Uh, we've just been uh, told that the uh, the number of the uh, young man, and it is Derek Stacy. Derek Stacy uh, is the one that will be uh, wheeled off in the stretcher, and they're going to take him to the near side, and they move the ambulance over, and they will pick him up uh, right outside the gate where the players come off, and. That was good thinking by Mike Ashbacker because I've seen kids wheeled off the other way and uh, wheeling them off on hard surfaces, I'd imagine, is a heck of a lot easier than uh, wheeling them off the other way. Is There is an ambulance uh, on uh, hand at every Decorah Viking football game, and you never want to use them, but... They're there, and uh, we hope, hope and pray for the best for that young man. As uh, he will be uh, wheeled away to uh, Wanashik Medical Center, and the professionals there will take care of uh, everything. We uh, do have an update from Manchester, West Delaware, leading Crestwood 35 28, two minutes left in the third quarter in that one, making the awkward transition back to football. First and 10 from the 26. Pitch to Sam Johnson, breaks the tackle right side, and gets brought down in front of the Decorah bench at the 20 yard line. So Sam Johnson getting six on that play. So that West Delaware Crestwood game getting a little crazy down there in Manchester. It's, uh, you know, it. This uh, whole district season actually has been a pretty interesting one, especially to me that uh, Independence, you know, you look at a team that not that long ago was going 0-9 uh, in a football season and now coming into tonight in contention uh, for a playoff spot. Second and four from the 20-yard line, give to Sam Johnson off the right side, and he moves ahead to the 15-yard line, and he'll have a first down. Zach Lamphere, the man that brought him down. Sam Johnson going to make uh, you know a pretty significant uh, mark on the stat sheet after this game tonight. So... Walk-On has defeated uh, Hampton Dumont 40-6. to First down and 10 at the 16-yard line. Three minutes to play in this one. 63-0 to Cora. Colin Nimrod is under his center. He takes the snap. He gives to Johnson right side. He plows ahead off the right side inside the 10. And down he goes near the... Five-yard line and a first down. Some more tough running from Sam Johnson. He just doesn't uh, doesn't ever stop those legs. Doesn't quit on the play, and uh, you know it serves him well. Makokita leading or Solon leading Makokita to 35-17. That is the Class 3A District Six Championship. It's if uh, everything works out the way it should. DeWint Central plays Marion next week. The winner of that game would be the three seed in that district, and the loser of that game would be the four seed. So, as of right now, you're looking at uh, you're looking at uh, Decora against one of those teams uh, here on the 30th of this month. Colin Nimrod's just going to take a knee, and Decora, frankly, doing the sportsmanship t- thing and the tip of the hat to uh, Bill uh, Post and his coaching staff uh, here with two minutes to play because you know you can score again here, but Honestly, what's the point? Yeah, you know, no uh, no need to put more points on the board. And then obviously, like we just saw with the situation a few moments ago, uh, there's really, really no reason to put uh, anyone yeah. in harm's way uh, anymore here tonight. Exactly. So 145 left in this one. I think Decor is just going to line up in the uh, victory formation once again. And Colin Nimrod will duck in under his center Carter Zidlicky. And... He'll take the snap with a minute 30 left and go down to one knee at the nine-yard line. So we'll send Chris Wanless down to the sideline to talk to Viking coach Bill Post. As part of the post-game show, Decora will win this one 63 to nothing, the 22nd straight win. The Vikings remaining undefeated, just like those Kansas City Chiefs. They're going to go to 8-0, and this is the 22nd consecutive win 
which will be the second longest in school history, 23 the longest in school history from uh, 1988 to 1990. It uh, started and ended with Waverly Showrock. Down to an E is Nimrod once again. I think, uh, I don't know if they can run it the entire way out. I think Scott Whitehill is uh, doing what he can. He'll chop it in play with uh, 33 seconds left. So, New Hampton leading Union 38-3. to, to three. Fourth quarter. North Fayette Valley leading Jessup end of the third quarter, 46 to nothing. Colin Nimrod down to one knee, and he will take a snap and go to one knee with five seconds left, and actually the clock won't stop as Decora will win its 22nd game in a row as they defeat the Owine Huskies 63 to nothing and we'll be back to put the cap on it here in a couple of minutes.